McLaren has been one of the most attractive teams recently, but it seems like their recent surge of performance is not going to last for a long period of time, even though the Woking base squad managed to rack up a whopping 86 points from Austria onwards, it doesn't seem like they're going to challenge any of the teams ahead of them for a higher spot in the Constructors' Championship after Norris revealed one of the massive issues that keeps the car from its optimum performance. What is this foe for McLaren, and is it strong enough to drift Norris away from the squad? Ever since Austria, we've started to see massive improvement in McLaren, more precisely in Norris' car, because his car was the only one that got the new upgrades that were mostly motivated by Red Bull's design. They were just iterated by McLaren's way. At Silverstone, where both cars had the same upgrades, a badly timed safety car was the only obstacle between a double podium finish for McLaren, as Piastri missed out on receiving his first career podium finish by a small margin. Nonetheless, it was Norris who had two consecutive P2 finishes in Silverstone and Budapest, and followed by Piastri's P4 and P5 finishes respectively, McLaren entered Spa with a lot of hope after the young Aussie finished just 11 thousandths of a second behind Verstappen during the sprint race. The first podium came at this venue, but the race event was not very eventful for the Woking base squad, as the inexperience of Piastri led to both him and Sainz retiring from the race, and Norris struggled a lot to keep the car in the optimum performance window. And this is where the main issue lies. It seems like the low downforce circuits are not something that McLaren are going to excel at. And while Silverstone was another story for the Papaya Nation, they have received a wake-up call from Spa. Lando Norris and Andrea Stella are now more than aware that they can't ride on the wave of the solid results they've posted in the past couple of races. And while they're going to continue with the upgrades until the end of the 2023 season, the team is pessimistic that they're going to be much more competitive and pass Mercedes for the P2 spot in the Constructors' Championship. Furthermore, even though the car is going to receive upgrades until the end of the season, the team has confirmed that they're going to be of a minor nature, meaning that they have already started to work on the 2024 Challenger in the wind tunnel. This came as a bit of a disappointment for the fans because in order for you to have a very competitive Challenger in the upcoming season, you need to be extremely focused on the current one because it's going to serve as a foundation for what's coming next. In an era where everything is so strict and regular by technical and financial rules, every little thing matters. And before we go into Norris' statement about McLaren's biggest foe, let's see how Stella shattered the dreams of the Woking Base Squad's fans with the latest statement regarding the upgrades on the MCL 60. As he went on to say, We will leave working on the old car as we leave the Toyota wind tunnel. We will not run the old car in the new wind tunnel. What we are working on this year's car, a lot of things are relevant for next year, but this year's model will not be put in the new wind tunnel. But still, the upgrades that have pushed McLaren in a very decent direction go to show that there's a lot of hope for all the other teams out there if they can find a proper way of interpreting the most successful team on the grid, Red Bull, and implementing it in their own philosophy. That's exactly what the Woking base squad did and it seems like they've unlocked one to two seconds of performance in just one batch of upgrades. Now you'd think that what McLaren has right now is perfect, right? Challenging Red Bull at the front, being able to keep both Ferrari and Aston Martin in the back for most of the time after the newest upgrades have been introduced and therefore being able to bring home more podium finishes was definitely a scenario they couldn't have wished for at the beginning of the season. However, the car's improvements are not enough for Norris and he feels like there are still a lot of flaws that need to be fixed over the upcoming period as he's also spoken about having Red Bull in the back of his mind as a team to which he could be moving soon if he's not able to win a championship with McLaren. When talking about the newest upgrade package, Norris didn't hold back words as he went on to elaborate. Even with this upgrade, the performance of driving the car, the handling is not getting any better. It's still just as difficult to drive, difficult to execute qualifying laps. In essence, it is slightly easier because if you make a mistake, we are higher up in the order, especially over the last few weekends. 
In the higher speed corners, it is harder to make a mistake because the car is performing better and we have made the car quicker, although I don't want to get ahead of ourselves as we've only had two weekends where we've been quick. But over the last five years, we have yet to make that step or improvement in slow speed handling and drivability. What this essentially means is that the car still lacks rear downforce and stability under braking, something in which Red Bull and Aston Martin have excelled in the current season. In order for this to happen, the car needs to have a very strong rear end and therefore be a bit unpredictable once you enter a corner, which is a car that Norris would pretty much love to drive and has urged his team to build one per se. But this isn't something that McLaren has been able to provide for Norris so far, and it's definitely not something that Norris is pleased with. Furthermore, he went on to explain what would work best for him in order to feel one with the car as he continued. For me, a bigger step would be improving how we drive the car, how easy it is to drive the car, rather than just adding 10 more points of load in the slow speed corners. That is only going to get us so far up the order. I know comments from other people are the same in a way, but we are one of the slowest cars in slow speed corners. It is just an area that has been bad for us for the last five years, and we've not really tackled that well. At no point have we gone, wow, the slow speed performance is strong, now let's work on the high speed. It has always been good in the high speed and poor in the slow speed. While the upcoming race in Zandvoort is very similar to Budapest when it comes to the downforce requirements, it should provide a heavy challenge for McLaren because there are not many parts of it where the MCL 60 could be fully sent on the main straights. This is a circuit that differs a lot from the latest one where McLaren survived a debacle, Spa, and while the slow speed nature of it could be challenging, according to Norris, we must not forget that the Budapest GP went heavily in their favour, so it will all be be about the setup of the car and the qualifying pace. One thing is certain, urgent work needs to be applied in McLaren, and this is something that Andrea Stella has talked about as well. While saying that they are very happy with what happened in the past couple of races, the wake-up call from Spa has made them realize that the low drag weakness needs to be addressed immediately because after Zandvoort, we are visiting the Temple of Speed, which is Monza, one of the fastest tracks on the calendar. When talking about this, Stella went on to elaborate, I think independently of the rear wing choice, we would have been very strong in the second sector even with less rear wing. The car is improved in some areas, this was confirmed. We take the benefit like, for instance, in being able to do that stint on the softs. But at the same time, this weekend confirmed that the areas that we haven't addressed yet give us a reality check that there's more work to do and to some extent confirm that those areas need to be addressed quite urgently. This urgency, for instance, comes from the fact that the second race after the shutdown is Monza. You can't go racing in Monza like this, so there's urgent work that needs to happen at McLaren to fix the situation. With this in mind, it seems like McLaren has a lot on their plate, even though they have unlocked a massive amount of performance. And while we're very happy to see the youngest drivers pair up in front and fighting for podiums, that glory could be taken away from them if the car does not improve further in 2023. With the majority of the grid already focused on 2024, Red Bull included, this could be the perfect chance for the Woking base squad to grab a win and push themselves closer to what would be more or less a perfect version of the MCL 60.